Ramadan, the ninth month of Islamic calendar, is the month of fasting for 2 billion Muslims all over the world. That's a quarter of world population. The fast starts with a pre-dawn meal and ends at sunset, with no food or drinks during this time. Fasting has many benefits. People with serious health conditions are exempted from fasting during this month. Diabetes is a common problem affecting 1 in 11 people. Watch our video on diabetes to learn more about it. In this video, let's talk about fasting in people with diabetes. Dr. A, what happens to our body during fasting? When we eat, our pancreas releases insulin that helps to store extra glucose that comes from food as glycogen in the liver, kidney, and muscles. Extra energy is also stored in body as fat. When we are fasting or not eating food for a long time, our body uses these stores of energy. It first uses the glycogen stores in the liver, but as fasting continues for several hours, these stores run out and the body then starts using the fat stores to supply energy. This energy is needed for all parts of our body. Apart from its spiritual benefits, fasting has many benefits for our health. Dr. A, can people with diabetes fast? In diabetes, the body is not able to manage glucose and energy stores properly. As you may have learned from our previous video, there are two types of diabetes. Type 1, in which the pancreas does not make insulin, and type 2, in which the insulin is not effective or may not be enough. Type 2 diabetes is more common. Whether a person with diabetes can fast or not depends on what kind of diabetes a person has, how severe it is, and what treatment they are on. Every person is different. So it is very important that you discuss with your own doctor if you should fast or not. Here I will mention some general principles. Most people with type 1 diabetes should not fast. Without eating at regular intervals and using insulin injections on time, people with type 1 diabetes can become very sick and have serious problems such as diabetic ketoacidosis. Type 2 diabetes is different. In general, most people who have good control of their blood sugars by diet, exercise, and with use of one or two medicines may be able to fast. Certain medicines can drop the sugar levels very low during fasting. These medicines should be stopped, reduced, or changed if the person wants to fast. Discuss each medicine that you take with your doctor and make changes a few days before Ramadan so you can adjust the doses as needed before you start fasting. Some patients with type 2 diabetes who are using small doses of insulin may be able to fast as well if their sugars are well controlled. The dose of insulin will need to be adjusted. On the other hand, people with type 2 diabetes who do not have good control of blood sugars or those who are taking high doses of insulin should not fast. Fasting in these people can lead to serious problems. These problems can be very low or very high sugar levels, severe dehydration, or acid buildup in the body called ketoacidosis. All these conditions can become very serious. If a diabetic person is fasting, what can they do to avoid complications? If your doctor allows you to fast, you should monitor your blood sugars closely, especially in the first few days of fasting. Check your sugars multiple times a day. Some important timings are 2 hours after morning meal, before breaking your fast, and 2 hours after the night meal. Normally, the target is to keep the sugar range between 90 and 130 when stomach is empty and less than 180 2 hours after the meal. However, during fasting days, these goals can be less strict. The dose of medicines should be adjusted if sugars are below or above the goal. If the sugar level becomes higher than 350 or gets lower than 70, then you should break your fast to take medicine or food. Additionally, you should break your fast if you develop symptoms of extreme weakness, fainting, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, or dizziness. Here are some eating tips that can be helpful. Make sure to drink lots of water with morning meal and after you break your fast. Staying well hydrated is very important. Fruits are a good source of vitamins and fiber, but they should be eaten in small portions at each time and you can have 2-3 to three portions of fruit in the whole day. An example of a portion of fruit is a bowl of fruit salad or one banana or one apple or orange. 
You can eat dates but do not take more than 2 to 3 dates at one time. Eat vegetables regularly. Also make sure to eat some protein both in the morning and evening meals. Good sources of proteins are eggs, chicken, fish, pulses, beans and also dairy products like milk and yogurt. Try to keep a controlled steady amount of carbohydrates in your meals as they can increase the sugar levels if eaten too much. For each meal your options are to take either two tortillas or roti or two bread slices or one naan or a bowl of rice or a bowl of pasta. At time of breaking fast, avoid eating very spicy foods, fried foods or too much sweets and desserts. Also avoid eating too much quantity of food altogether when breaking fast. It is better to take a portion of food at one time and leave the rest for later and eat at small intervals. This way you have multiple small meals or snacks and divided portions after you break your fast. In the end I will remind you to consult your doctor. Start making changes in medicines and diet habits a few days before Ramadan so you are ready when the time comes. If you benefited from this video, give us a thumbs up by hitting the like button and subscribe to our channel to learn more about health and disease. Stay healthy and help others stay healthy. Did you know the lunar calendar has 355 days and is 10 days shorter than the solar calendar? This is why Ramadan comes 10 days earlier every year. In 30 years, you will get to fast in all four seasons. How amazing is that?